Good morning. Here's another video I'm making about the bear hawk. This hopefully will be useful to some people. There's been some discussion on the group about how best to organize a set of plans for when you're building on the aircraft. And this is what I came up with. It's not the, the only way out there. Other people have other ways of doing it, but this is how I ended up doing it. I got my original set of plans. That's the original box that they come in. And I wasn't ready to build quite yet, but when I did, when I was ready to build, I went ahead and ordered a second set of plans from Bob Barrows. And I took them and put them in this. It's a, this brand, I told you, calls it an art pro folio, but actually it's just a regular uh, portfolio, 18 by 24. It's pretty handy. It's got a hard plastic cover. And if you open it up, it's just basically a bunch of document protectors. Slip your plans in. Comes in really handy. Keeps them nice and clean. Keeps them good for reference. And they're put in order, 1 through 28, I believe, with the exception of the Mylar and a couple other uh, items here, but that's where uh, that's where all the plans are located. Keeps them nice and clean. So once I had my plans in hand, I went ahead and went to my bear tracks and also whatever references that I had downloaded from the bear hawk group about some changes that they had made in their projects as they built. And I made a compilation of all the changes here at uh, the very end of this little book. And then once I got done with that, got all the changes and everything, I went ahead and went to my, my plans that I'm using and I made annotations on the plans. For instance, in this particular area, you can see that I made some notes here and the notes refer to this particular drawing here. It's an amendment for making your seatbelt attach points. So once I went ahead and under, read and understood the change, transposed them onto the plans, I went back here and I put a line through the drawing and I wrote OK. That means that I understood them, I read them, and they've been transposed correctly onto the plans. And I went through that and I did all those particular items all the way through to the very end. You can see there's a bunch of pencil marks on here, little annotations. One other thing, if you notice, once you order a set of replacement plans, you get the latest set. For instance, down here in the legend in the bottom right hand corner, you can see this is a fuselage modification for the rear doors, plan 16A. If you notice, this has got a yellow highlight in the corner. I highlighted those to make sure that I don't mix them up with my reference set. But if you look, this is the original set of plans I got in 2003. If you look at it, it's got the original date of the drawing and then also has a revision date of 2602. If you look at the plans that I ordered from Bob Barrows, the replacement set, it's got another revision of 12604. So this is a newer set than this set. And I believe this is the only change here up here in this corner. So whenever you get a replacement set of plans you're guaranteed that you have the absolute latest set of plans that are out there. And another thing I did order from Bob Barrows was the set of tailwheel plans. I keep these folded up because actually what I did was I went ahead and ordered a set of or ordered a tailwheel from Scott Weinberg. I was going to build one but I thought well for the, for the money uh, I can go ahead and save the time uh, to work on something else. The other thing that you can save some time on is going back up here. This is the original set of plans for the wing strut end fittings. If you look at it, it's 4130 tubing or 4130 steel, I should say, and you need to make two of them. And then here's the alternate drawing here is 15A, and this is the one that's made of 2024 T3 aluminum. So this is the machine part, that's the 4130 part. 4130 part, perfectly acceptable, no problems at all. The machine part is nice. Avapro actually sells this part as well. You can take a look at that. So what else do I have here? I've got a set of cheaters in case I need to read something that I can't read very well. 
I get my cheaters out. I have my engineering ruler, for instance. And the engineering ruler is going to be kind of handy. Or I shouldn't say it is kind of handy. It's indispensable, actually. I got this at a thrift store. Probably paid 25 cents for it. And you can tell it's the three-sided ruler. Color-coded. Red, blue, and then white. And white is the one that I'm looking for when I'm doing my plans. Because this is the scale that says 1 to 10. For every one mark here, it means 10 marks on the plans. So, and here's a scale 1 to 10 right here. For instance, here we got 20 inches on this station G to K. If I line up my ruler on the, the lines, you can see that it indicates right at 20. So, if I need to scale anything off the plans, these plans are accurate. I can go ahead and do that using my ruler. There's no error in these plans in this replacement set. If you go to Kinko's and have a replacement set made, there might be a little bit of an error that you might move an inch or half an inch. And then over time, that's going to be quite a, quite a difference. The other thing I have is a clear ruler. Don't use it for scaling, but it's nice because it's clear. Because I can lay it on the plans and I can see through what I'm looking at. It's not blanking out whatever is underneath the ruler. Another thing I have is a, is a calculator, a lumber calculator. Adds fr inches and fractions of an inch. I use that to double check my work. It's not exactly rocket science adding half inch increments, but I always like to double check. Other thing I have is got a lot of these 5 by 8 notepads strewn around the shop if I'm making notes. It's easy to just grab one of those notepads, tear, tear it off, stuff the note in my pocket, and I've got it for later. The other thing I have is my handy dandy pencil holder from my son when he was in grade school. He made it for me. I've got a whole bunch of uh, pencils in here. I also have a, a silver sharpie for marking on 4130 tubing. And also I have silver welding pencils for marking on 4130 tubing. The other thing I have is I've got these little uh, post-it notes. And they're little Mylar post-its. Sometimes if I'm looking through the plans, and I see something, I'm thinking, wow, I've got to think about that when I'm at that stage of construction, but it's not where I am now. I want to make a little annotation to make sure that I don't forget it. So I'll take one of these little stickies and I'll put it on here. And forgive me, I'm, left -hand I'm not left-handed. I can write a little annotation on here to remind myself, because I guarantee a month later I'm not going to remember the thought that I just had. So that's a good memory jogger for me. I'll leave that little note in place. And uh, the other thing uh, that I have here is my laptop. And I've got Eric Newton's fuselage manual. This has become very, very, very handy. Okay, I love the manual. It's really great. The laptop, you'll think, oh, well, shoot, the guy's got a computer in his shop. Well, this is one of those hand-me-down laptops that you can get on Craigslist for like uh, 25, 30 bucks. And I use it for using my online products. I don't know if I can open it one-handed, but there we go. But anyway, it's just a really old laptop, but it's good. I have Russ Herb's CD on here and some other references that I have from my computer inside the house. And the other thing I wanted to mention, talking about Russ Herb, is Russ Herb had made uh, an error when he was building and annotated it in his CD that don't do this. In other words, uh, make sure you don't make the same error. So I took that information, I went ahead and found that place on the plans and I highlighted that in pink. So I wanted to make sure that when I get to that point, I'm not going to forget. The other thing I have is, last but not least, is a uh, white pearl eraser. I'll show you how it works in a second. If you notice, the plans are over here on the table, and all i got to do is turn 180 degrees, and there's my building table. So that helps out a lot to have the plans close by. So when I was laying out my bottom of my fuselage, I went ahead and laid it out, tacked it all together, and then when I pulled it off, I needed to make the layout lines for the top of the fuselage. I didn't want to paint the top of the table. Some people advocate that. I particularly didn't care for it, and I thought for an option. You know, I don't like the smell of burning paint. So I went ahead and I got one of these white erasers. It has to be white, not the pink kind. The white is good because not only can you uh, 
make erasures or changes to your plans or make annotations on your plans and erase cleanly but you can go to the plywood here like what I did you can see the ghost of the lines at the bottom of the fuselage it erases really cleanly you can take it and rub it erases clean and then I went ahead and laid out the top of the fuselage I left the center line there and eventually you'll end up with something like that.